Hey, it's Margaret from Play. In this video, we're going to talk about the native navbar, as this is part of our navigation series in Play. So to add a native navbar to your page, you're going to select the page and go into the navigation panel and flip the switch for the navbar. When you do this, it's going to automatically add the navigation bar to your page. It's also going to open this navigation bar panel where you can customize it. But we're going to pause on that for a second. And I first want to direct you to my iOS device where we can show you a bit more of the functionality given to you for free just by flipping this navigation bar switch. So you have the nav bar that's at the top of the page, and it's always going to stay there. When you scroll down the page, it's going to change from the large style to the small style automatically. I've also added an open page action on this Amazon card. So when I tap that, it's going to go to this new page. Because both pages have navigation bars on them, it's also going to give me this back button. When I tap that back button, it's going to go back to the home page. Again, I didn't need to style that. It's just added automatically. Another cool thing is on this page, I can pan backwards. That functionality is also given to us for free. You can see that home, the title, is going into the back button and also onto the page title. So that's a pretty cool transition there. Last thing, you can long press on the back button. It's going to give you a list of all of the pages that you've been to in this native menu. You can tap and it's going to navigate you directly back to that page. In this case, we only had one, but you could be navigating between five pages and using that menu could take you back to the first page. So that's a bit, of more, a bit more about the functionality. Now let's talk about customizing it. So I can close this navigation panel and reopen it from this icon next to the switch. The first property here in the bar is the bar style. So by default, it's auto, which is going to give us the large title when it's not scrolled and the small title when it is scrolled. You can also change it to always be large or small. And when it's small, no matter where you scroll on the page, it's always going to be that small version of the nav bar. Next, you have the bar items. You can add left bar items, which will show up on the left side, and you can choose right bar items, which will show up on the right side. Right now, we have this search bar that's showing up on the right side, so it's in our right bar items. You can add a new one by clicking on the plus sign. You can choose any of these words here, any of these symbols, any spacer, or you can choose a custom symbol or a custom text. I'm going to use a custom symbol here, and we're just going to do a arrow to collapse because we're going to use this to change the state of a card in a little bit. You can also add some words in here so I can make this collapse. Now that's going to show in my nav bar as well. Just by deleting that, it automatically saves it without that word anymore. You can also change the tint color. So right now it's going to be blue, but I can make it white. I can make it dark blue, any of these colors. This is actually going to override the tint property that we'll talk about a little bit later. Lastly, you can link this to a page. That's also something we're going to come back to a bit later. The next property is enable back. So enable back is going to add that back button on this page if you navigate to this page from another page. Related to that is show title on subpage. This one is going to affect the next page. So if we have show title on subpage turned on, it's going to show the name home on that next page. So let me show you this. We are going to turn the show title on subpage off first. And by doing that, now when I tap this Amazon button, you can see I still have that back button, but it's not showing the word home. All the other functionality is still going to be built in, but it's not moving the home title from this page to the next page. If I go into the details page and I open the navbar panel here, I can turn off enable back. Now, if I go into this nav native navigation page, do this whole thing again, now you can see there's no back button and this pan back interaction does not work. That's because on the next page, this details page, that's where we've turned off the, uh, the back button. So let's go back and oopsies, turn that back on. And also in this page, turn back on the show title on sub page. Next, you have the prompt. This is an extra space for you to write some extra information. Next, you have had hide nav bar. This is other native functionality that you can turn on or off. So you can choose to hide the nav bar when the user taps on it, when the user scrolls, or the keyboard appears. So let me show you. When we have on scroll turned on, let me refresh this. Now, when I scroll down, the nav bar is actually going to be totally moved off the top of the screen as opposed to just changing into the small version. 
Lastly, we have our default appearance and our scrolled appearance. So the names are a little self-explanatory here. The default appearance is how your nav bar is going to look when you've not scrolled. So there's several properties in here. You can adjust the blur effect. You can add a shadow. You can change the tint color. This is going to change the color of all of the icons unless they're overridden by the color in the actual bar item. So you know how we changed that from blue to white earlier? That's an override. Back in here, the next is bar fill. So this is going to change the background color of the entire navigation bar. And then you have title fill, and this is going to change the color of that title. So the word home here. Just a quick note on the title. You can change the title if you have, I actually have this page called native navigation, but the title that I've changed in this page title property is called home. So I can update this and have it say like, hello, I could have it say nothing. I could go back to home. So you can change that there. Now going back to the appearance, we just talked about the default appearance. For the scrolled appearance, you can choose to match the default appearance and that's gonna disable all of the other properties and it's always going to match in the scrolled and default. You can also turn that off and you can add a shadow, adjust the blur effect, change the bar fill, and adjust the title fill. You cannot adjust the tint. The tint has to stay the same across default and scrolled states. So that is how you customize your navigation bar. The last thing I want to show you is how to add interactions. And we'll do this in two ways. First, we're going to link pages. And second, we're going to use navbar events. So let's start with linking pages. In any of my bar items, I can click on the chain link icon on the right side. It's going to give me a list of all of the pages in my project, and I can select any of them to open in default mode. Default mode, in this case, is going to open it as basically looking like a native sheet. So now when I refresh my prototype and tap on that search button, it's going to open this. And then I can close this sheet. So that's one way, that's how you link your pages. The other way to add interactions is to use a navbar event. That's gonna be done basically the same way. So on this right bar item, I'm gonna click that chain link icon again, and instead of selecting any of these pages, I'm gonna trigger an event. So I'm gonna do new event here, and we're just creating any type of event and we can name it whatever we want. In this case, I wanna use, I wanna call it like collapse card. And now I'm gonna create that. And now this is linked to an event. You can tell because this icon is a bit different. So that's just part one of adding a navbar event. The second part is going into interaction mode. So we add the navbar event, it's automatically going to add an event trigger onto our page. Whenever we tap that button, it's going to fire this event and any resulting actions. So let's add on here a set state action. We're gonna target this summary card and I'm gonna use either next or previous. There's only two states, so it doesn't really matter. And I'm just gonna to choose to ping pong between the two states. I'm gonna turn on animate as well. So now if we reset, when I tap that, it's going to close that card. When I tap it again, it's going to expand it. And then when I tap that search bar, it's going to open this data sheet and I can expand that again. So that is how you can add a nav bar, customize a nav bar, link pages from navbar items, and also set events to use any other interactions using navbar. Thanks so much for watching this video.